Energy plays a vital role in the growth of every economy. It affects all lives, irrespective of gender, age, societal and cultural barriers. On Energy Quest, we demystify the energy sector to the understanding of all within and out of the energy sector, as well as project businesses, individuals, especially women, and explore opportunities within the energy sector. Welcome to season two finale. In this season, we discuss some teething problems that had to do with business financing, and we go experts to expand on topical issues in the energy sector. You know, so that we could put together a transaction that was possible and that was doable, you know. So throughout the journey, I, I must say that um, every stakeholder in it played a very big part in making Make it, it come to pass. Way. And um, across the financial sector in Ghana, there hasn't been such a transaction. Yes, you yes, know, yes. So it's really a first, and I dare say even in the region. Oh, you wow. Know, so... Um, it's a first where they're learning. Oh, yes, there are lots of learnings. <laughs> are there things we will do differently in the next opportunity? Of Absolutely. Yeah. Are there some things that we'll definitely do in the next opportunity? Yes, there are, you know. But the beauty for me is that this is real local content talking. Mm -hmm. and, and I think for the Angkor Talo as well, this is the one big statement you yeah. know, that can and be local made content. about the local content intervention. It's no longer just a buy and sell. It's actually a Ghanaian business providing a core anchor handling and tax service to, to the, the industry. Fields. Yeah, yes, because mostly the businesses they are all buy and sell. When a local person has to be provide any service for the oil industry, is about buy what goods, provide what I mean, basically minor services. So this this, this is a great feat, and it is major. I'm, I'm really happy that Absa gave them the opportunity. Um, did you, have you already worked with Flatsy? So um, when Flatsy approached us, they weren't doing much with us, no. You know, but as we engaged them and sought to understand what they wanted to achieve, uh, we realized also that um, other players in the sector had given them a little bit of support here and okay. there. Uh, but we saw that this was something that was game changing. And um, even though it was uncharted territory, we believed in the dream. Okay. And so we did the hard That's work that important. came with it, you yeah. know. And, and I must say that it's also important for entrepreneurs to be ready to pay the price. So we can use solar to reduce energy. First of all, let's identify your needs clearly. Mm -hmm. Once we identify that, and then we specify something that would help you reduce your power consumption. I said earlier that in an urban setting, you cannot do away with grid. Yeah. Because automatically so it is passing and you get it connected. So it's not about being independent of grid, grid or solar. Yeah. And this is very important as well, even for ECG engineers. Mm -hmm. because <laughs> our experience is that most of them think solar is competing with them, but it is not. It's actually complementing their work. I, th I think it's all about education. Precisely. Any other women advocacy group that seems to promote the interest or uh, the professional development of women, yeah. you know, we, we have some kind of collaboration to promote it. Okay. Yeah. So finally, um, give us some advice on sustainable growth and development of the sector. Well, we, we have gotten to a point where the National Petroleum Authority needs to change the way they do things. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the licensing regime. Today we have about 170 oil marketing companies question we need to ask is 170 oil marketing companies we <laughs> have we have more market. than 4000 service stations or outlets in the country okay. now look at our land space as Ghana compare that to Ivory Coast in mm -hmm. Ivory Coast they have just a, a little under 2000 oil marketing companies or service stations so oh. sorry so we have more than we need mm -hmm. and we are we, still and we are still giving licenses we are still giving construction permits for people to we have gotten to, we have come to the to the point where we need to prune it down. Mm -hmm. Now pruning it down doesn't mean collapsing people's businesses, but we need to look at the minimum entry requirements to see 
if these 170 companies meet that threshold. If they don't meet it, let's begin to cut them out. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see the National Petroleum Authority getting to the point where before your license is renewed, you need to present your business plan to maybe a panel, mm -hmm. present your result for the previous year, convince them that you need to be in the sector before they renew your license to you. No, but that, that would make business continuity tough. It won't be Difficult. tough. I mean, they just have to, to, to time it. I mean, H Have there been lots of them falling off along the way or they are surviving anyway? Definitely. I mean, at the, at the, at the last check, we had about 48 oil marketing companies that have gone underwater. Either they owe the GRA or wow. other regulatory bodies, um, for which reason they are not able to operate. Yeah. Their licenses have been not revoked, but I mean, have been frozen. They cannot access the ERDMS system. Yeah. As such, they are not able to load products. Um, and for me, that, that brings into question the kind of corporate governance structures that some of that these marketing have. companies are put in place. Because mm -hmm. that is the only way you can survive this environment. If you don't get the structures right, you cannot survive. Yeah, because it's, it's a tough one. It the is. The challenges keep coming. You know? Definitely it is. So, I mean, already on aircraft, I could say that, you know, if we were to change the design, we're saving there at least 10, 15, 20%, 30% maybe mm. on emissions. So there are things we can do today on aircraft that can improve them, you know, to get to that net zero, you know. So, so not necessarily changing the kind of fuel put in there. Yeah. But not, just the design can just the aid design. on emissions. You know what? Not even just the design, also the operations, because of modern technology. Mm -hmm. You may have heard of AI, you may have heard of big data, blockchain, all of these things. Yeah. Aircraft and the computers in aircraft are getting smarter and smarter. Okay. In fact, one of the things my former company is, is looking at. Airbus. Airbus is looking at having aircraft flying in formation. So for example, you see when birds are flying in the sky and they're, they're flying in a triangular formation. Mm -hmm. And basically the birds at the back are basically um, benefiting from the updraft or the vortices produced by the forward birds, mm. which significantly improves the, um, the efficiency of, of flying. Okay. So the question is, why don't we do this with aircraft flying today? So if flying a fleet? Flying a fleet in formation. If you have 10 or 20 or 30 or 100 aircraft flying from Africa to Europe every day, uh -huh. I mean, if they fly in formations so of 10, then there'll be a significant uh, fuel burn reduction. And wow. the technology is there because of computer uh -huh. analytics, uh -huh. all this kind of technology. I'm on the seabed as well. So there's a body in the UN called International Seabed Authority. What it does is that it gathers experts from around the world and then assign them to specific companies mm -hmm. and then you go on research okay. um, exploration. So they brought a letter to Ghana Ministry of Energy brought it around okay. and then like a lot of geoscientists applied and then I was chosen to be a part of it. Wow. So we're offshore Japan for three months. Okay. And then we came back. Okay. What we're doing was basically collecting um, mineral deposits from the seabed to know where they are in abundance and then where, uh, where at a point where it's of a higher risk to mine that. Mm -hmm. So we collected the samples, analyzed them, and then gave our interpretation. So you to analyzed to know if there's gold, there's gold, any kind of mineral manganese in there. manganese and cobalt. Okay, so we have different um, minerals, and the main ones that usually we explore for are sea um, massive sulfides, cobalt rich manganese crusts, and then um, I've forgotten the other one. There are three. Okay. So the one I went on the exploration cruise for was the cobalt rich manganese crust. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For three months. Yeah. Um, I would say that people are always shocked when they see me either climbing a ladder or like trying to fix a couple of screws here and there. Um, I remember quite recently in December when we had to fix someone's inverter, the person said, uh, are you sure she can do it? <laughs> so you receive comments like that. But um, I guess one, one thing that I've told myself is that, you know, there's fewer women in the industry and representation matters. So as someone sees you, they'll be able to know that, you know, women can also do that kind of job. I, I really like that. So do you have 
lots of women in Suka. Unfortunately, well, yeah, we have a long history of women who have been here trained at Suka. Yes, trained okay. here at Suka. Um, and the crazy thing is that they go on to do amazing things. I know one woman, wow. I don't know her personally, but I've heard that she works at Kolebu for their electrical and energy department. Um, there's other women who are doing, you know, amazing things wherever they are. That, but that came the through Suka. Yes, the foundation was Suka. We began the Energy Career Seminars, which is a major project at the heart of the Energy Quest Foundation. On the first edition, we had leaders of the sector and some academics who impacted the attendees on the best ways to fit into the energy sector. first step is this, look, you have to identify, and I hope you guys take notes here, in choosing a career, you have to identify what you are good at. It's the first step. And that comes more with what uh, Mr. Ohinefa said, be an avid seeker of knowledge. The more you know about yourself, the more it shapes your direction in choosing your career. I saw something about myself when I was in the university, and this is something I, I don't know which, which cohorts or which year groups we have here, but do not limit yourself in school to only your coursework. Like Mr. Fa said, 30% of what we require in the workplace is what you do in your coursework. Be cross-functional while you're here. I, I participated in student politics. I was the public relations officer of the university when I was on campus. I had my first general manager job on campus. When I say this to people, they get shocked. I was the first person as a student to manage the radio station on campus, Focus FM. When I heard Leslie was organizing this program, I was excited because in our part of the world, you just chance upon things, like you just walk into things. Whereas um, if you go to maybe Europe or the Americas, people are groomed into career opportunities. You don't, you don't just chance upon things or walk into anything. You are groomed into a career. There you are counseled about your career, your guidance. Here nobody counsels you about anything. Nobody guides you about anything. All that we know are the basic engineering, basic doctor, basic this. But what we don't know is that even the raw scientists or the raw economics and everything that we do here, there are so many career opportunities in it. There are so many of them that, I mean, if we, maybe now we have to read but in uh, an avenue like what Leslie is doing would also open, um, let's say, the gateway for people to get to know about more of these things. Just as I said again, relationship. Relationship. And my, my first breakthrough was given. Guess what? Even in, with my coins, I would still take my salary and dash, buy things and dash to people. That was me. So we just given, connected me to one big man. He held my hand door to door, all the officers that have gone there to prospect for, uh, to supply, they said no. But because he held my hand and took me there, per his confirmation, I was accepted. And now I'm dealing with great clients, great, great clients. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, did, I, I never said I had a democratic leader. <laughs> I never <laughs> said that. Um, but um, the Bible says that you know you're getting get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. I don't know what it says in the Quran, but wisdom is the principal thing. Um, you need to learn on how to live with people, how to coexist with different people under a particular umbrella. If your boss is the strict type and he expects your, uh, maybe your pen to lie this way on the table. Make sure the pen is always lying like that on the table. First, you must know your corporate principles. This is what the corporation or the company expects you to do. Do exactly that. And then if you can better it, maybe your boss wants you to be somebody who is serving to you all the time, but you're a good communicator. Serve your tea with excellence. But... Communicate very well. Don't go and stand in front of your boss and try to shove it down her throat that you're a good communicator. No, never do that. If he wants you to serve tea, serve tea. But then if there's an opportunity for you to communicate, then you take that chance and make sure you, 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 you execute your best. Don't do what is contrary to what your boss wants you to do. And usually in an organization, especially 
we the young people, we like to sideline with the people who are always in the bosses like this, always complaining about leadership. No. If you are in an organization, your allegiance is to the boss. It's not to any other person who feels they are intelligent than the boss and that the boss is doing something which is not right and that they know best. No. Your allegiance is to the boss. Do what your boss wants, except in an instant where he's going or he or she is making you go contrary to what the company, the company wants you to do. We say a big thank you to our partners for helping make this seminar project a big success. Cubica Energy, JP Energies, Leader Freak, University of Ghana Business School, and the School of Engineering Sciences. It will be great for you also to give back and impact society through the seminar. To partner us in doing this, please contact the numbers on your screens. The rapid rise in petroleum prices left Ghanaian in quandary. On Energy Quest this season, we learned that this problem is more global than local. However, the government must consider policies that would cushion the consumer from the direct effects of such. And such policies could be the holding of buffer stock, it could be in the management of forex, among others. Right. If you recall, was it November or December 2021, before okay. the Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, the commercial transport operators had decided to do a sit-down strike because of fuel prices. Oh, yes. So they stopped working for a day. We had had a lot of engagements with them. Mm -hmm. Initially, the excuse is that let's go and increase transport fares. Yeah. But you know where the problem is? When you increase transport fares, those who join public transport, it's not the political class. Mm -hmm. It's not those in the big offices getting free fuel. They won't even join public transport. Mm -hmm. It is the same ordinary people that we are fighting for who, go who will come to join. More. So I told the drivers plainly, those who will come and join are your aunties, cousins, sisters. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when they come back to the house, they'll tell you now everything has gone <laughs> up. So you're the same driver that mm -hmm. has collected more from their it's transportation. A cycle, right? So you should give them the money. Mm -hmm. And it is it replicates to the governmental structure. What government doesn't realize is that when you allow fuel prices to go up, labor will come and take the money that you think you are collecting from taxes back, back from you. Mm -hmm. Because they can no longer go to work and return home safely. They can no longer afford to keep, you know, body and soul together. Exactly. With their so kind they of, come back to you. They will come back to it. you. Of course. Because if prices are changing <laughs> weekly, daily, mm -hmm. salaries don't change weekly and daily. So exactly. they need to demand it. Exactly. Else, they will come and I take mean, the money. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we advise governments not to think of just revenue, revenue, yeah. but think of impact that there are a lot of senior government officials who are not happy mm -hmm. with the way fuel price is heading. Good. But if the finance minister is not interested, can you force him? What do you mean by that? Because for interested... He mm. would definitely mm -hmm. be interested. Leslie, the, B, the, BDC, the BDCs would not be going back and forth with Bank of Ghana. Pleading just for, to, pleading for, for, for forex. For, yes, for, I mean, yes. They won't yes. go back and because, forth if there was a commitment. If, if, if you sell products at um, price X today and you do not get forex to pay back, because all, all, all the fools are imported, to pay back the supplier, by, after, by after some time, after. a week after, you, ha you, you, need, you need so much more to source the same <laughs> amount of USD to pay back. So the it's, capital it's, it's, it's for stressful. BDC and those mm -hmm. who import fuel is it's waning. endangered. It's waning completely. It's endangered. If you are not Badly. lucky, yeah. like I was saying with one media house not long ago, just a month ago, in fact less than a month ago, yeah. the CD dollar exchange was 6.5 hmm. to a dollar. Yeah. So if I owed somebody one million dollars, all I needed was six point five million Ghana cities, I could be able to pay the person exactly. out. Exactly. Today, if I didn't pay that person a week or a month ago, in trouble. and I yeah. still owe the person the same one million dollars, I'm not gonna say I'm owing him one point two one million dollars. I would need eight million Ghana cities to be able to pay that one million. That's one point five <laughs> Leslie. So if it's ten million dollars, fifteen million Ghana cities. 
And the finance guy is not interested. If he was, I'm not sure Bank of Ghana will continue to auction dollars in these critical times to people who are bringing in secondhand clothes <laughs> and people importing kotoje and whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's... When, when the fuel industry is suffering. And, and it's taking a hit on the general economy. Yeah. You would rather go and say, I have auctioned dollars. No, too, too, too many businesses are down. Because, you know, most businesses would, um, would do all these imports on LCs. So if you take a letter of credit that is supposed to be due somewhere in March, and then the products were sold three months ago, you probably, even if you forecasted a, li a little more on Forex, you would never estimate If you went to 7.2 and today is at 8. You would never estimate this is it. And even at 8, the, the dollar is not on the market. You won't get it. Exactly. I know. Because so Interbank now is are, almost quoting the 8. Oh. Interbank. I went to the bank not long ago, The yesterday. bank doesn't have the money. And the bank is also quoting on their whatever. They are selling it for 7.9 something, 8 it is. So it means that that is even the interbank rate. Yeah. If you don't get it from the bank and you need to go to Anywhere the open else market, the market to source for it, probably <laughs> nine cities. It's bad. Leslie, things are Ooh. really bad. We need to tell the truth to our authorities. If we don't say it to them, we will continue to believe and make ourselves believe that, oh, it will get better. They are not doing anything. Omada, as I keep saying. And one for himself. <laughs> God for Leslie, us all. The pumps are telling us <laughs> something. Yeah. And those numbers you see at the pumps, it's not magic. It's not conjecture. Yeah. They are real-time numbers coming from the international market, coming from your local market, the city market. Mm -hmm. If you put the two together, you will get those numbers at the pumps. Another exciting aspect of this season was our experience on the MV Flat Confidence. We opened Ghanaians to the opportunities in the sector and the fact that local content could go this far. The MV Flat Confidence currently operates on the 10th and Jubilee Fields with Talu Ghana. It's fully manned by Ghanaians, no expatriates. I think this is great success per our local content policy and initiative. Kudos to the captain and everybody involved in this great historic feat. It's not a cheap vessel. vessel yeah. Yeah. We negotiated hard and uh, everything else that came along the line came expensive because the timing, the delay, uh, the weather, uh, the COVID, uh, the difficulty of negotiations, yeah. everything. So it, she turns out to be a very expensive vessel. Wow. But she's beautiful. And, and, too. and it's really beautiful. Looking but we have around. never regretted putting in order for, I mean, it is expensive. We nearly, but we never regret it. No, you must be it. really yeah. proud. I yeah, mean. we are. And humbled. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's really beautiful and it's mm. different. Yeah. It's really different. Yeah. I, I, I just hope this will edge other people on. But um, do you have any plans on mentoring others? Because the, the industry has so much opportunity. We do have the local content policy, but somebody must, must put in work. I mean, Everybody is doing bits of, but what, what, what can you do to help other people to nurture others on, on, on to? Uh, I would want to know. believe that what we are doing now, you interviewing us yeah. sets the pace. Yeah. Uh, we have the concept of training young Ghanaians. Right. We presently have one young 22 year old yeah, trainee cadet, yeah. and uh, we intend to continue to. Once he gets the required training and he leaves, somebody else will replace him and then build the Ghanaian capacity. The capacity yeah. As to the knowledge and the courage to buy and own ships, they will have to develop it internally and then develop that relationship to build that teamwork. This vessel is 100% operated by Ghanaians. Wow. Right from top A to bottom. Big congratulations on yes. that. A big, big, and big one. No expatriates. It is no expatriates. We are our own expatriates. Wow. <laughs> so the, the vessel employs about how many people? Uh, presently, presently we have 18. 18. Yeah. Okay. And uh, to add to Michael's message, we, I want to put it across that, look, Ghanaian seamen or Ghanaian workers are really hard working. They are good in the profession. Yeah. Um, this boat, there were two of them, which 
we bought there were two okay another oh, company two vessels. two vessels another company bought a sister ship they couldn't sell the boat to its destination they have to return but our guys wow. which were, we were full we're Ghanaians, fully Ghanaians we brought this boat to its destination and they were wow. surprised wow. Uh, the, the, wow. the, the, the builders were so surprised okay. about it so that shows how Ghanaians are. I mean we know the job we are good if given the opportunity Ghanaians can do it and do it better This brings us to the end of season two. It's been interesting, educative, insightful. I hope you learned a thing or two. In the next season, we will extend our frontiers and address some global issues that has to do with the energy transition, how it affects Africa directly or indirectly. We're going to look at the hydrothermal achievements of Ghana. And then we're going beyond Accra and beyond Ghana. Stay tuned with us. To partner or sponsor any of the Energy Quest Foundation projects, such as this, the Energy Quest Talk Show, or our Women in Energy Advocacy Programs, or our flagship Energy Career Seminar, please contact the numbers on your screen or find us via our social media handles. As we always say, we demystify the energy sector and add value. So we meet again next season. I'm Leslie Arthur Esiedu, your host. <music>